Hello world. Welcome back to Agile on the Trail. I am back here at Tar Hollow State Park to hike the Logan Trail Southern Loop with a little little loop added on to it at the, uh, at the tail end of that Southern Loop. So it's really like two loops in one for a total of about like 10.1 miles, I think, according to my map. Of course, I was here last week hiked the northern loop and I was a little off of my mileage so we'll see I am starting at the Bush Ridge fire tower here at Tar Hollow State Park last week I started off at the other trailhead that was uh, near the recreational lake and the other trailhead for what was it, the, the Homestead Trail? I think it was the Homestead Trail, which I tacked on to the, the end of my hike last week. I have never done the Southern Loop here at Tar Hollow on the Logan Trail, but it is a nice day for, you know, a Thursday, March 16th, shortly before nine o'clock. And yeah, let's get to it. Let's have some fun. I made it to point N. That is right there. So I came up there, hiked down to here. A little valley, stream. Trail goes that way. At least that's the direction I'm heading. However, as I stated before, sometimes the trail markings are a little confusing. So I notice if I'm walking towards the sign. See what's on the tree? There's a bright orange or bright red. Kind of points that way. And off in the distance, I don't know if you could tell. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Where is it at? Da -da. All right. There, there's a red mark right there on that tree. All right. So, however, that's not the way I came. I was walking from this direction. And from this direction, you can see there's a pretty nice trail and even red marks on the trees. Uh, beyond this, there's a couple of trees that are falling down. I had to circumvent, but basically I was walking this way. Not minding my own business. Hey, here's the marker right here. And then I looked up and went, what the? And realize this is another instance where you can get somewhat confused on this trail as evidently the right hand being the older paint is the older trail the, the redder paint the brighter paint is apparently the new trail they want you to take possibly because of all the trees that are down over there however coming down off the hill which is back up that way that hill right there i came down off of I must have missed the, the sign again of which way to go and just followed the old trail here. So not a big deal, but somewhat annoying at times, I guess. Uh, I haven't been lost, been confused at times uh, last week. Uh, this week, not so much. This is kind of like the first instance where I've kind of went, oh, okay, here's another spot where it's not very clear. Now, I say all that to say this. 
here at Tar Hollow State Park on the trail, I like this sign. I like these signs. I mean, it tells you where you're at. You can look on the map where you're at. You can see the surrounding areas, the topography and everything else. I like this. This gives me a confirmation of where I'm at, where I need to be heading and everything else. Perfect. Love it. Absolutely love, love these signs and stuff. So great job. I personally have been hiking the Zaleski backpack trail for like 30 plus years. And I love that trail. And I still do. You know one thing they don't have? These signs. I know the trail almost by heart. It is, I would say, uh, better managed in the way of trail markings and being clear in what direction you, you need to go. There are some still spots on that trail that are a little eh, kind of iffy. But over and all, after 30 years of hiking that trail, I got to say it's, it's uh, the markings are a lot more clear. There's more of them. Uh, less chance of getting confused, like in this type of area, in this type of scenario. However, what they don't have are these signs. And I think it would be a nice addition for the Zlesky Backpack Trail to possibly uh, implement uh, these, these type of signs at the, the major markers so that people understand where they're at on the trail and how far they got to go. That's just my two cents. So, anyways, just a little bit of a confusing spot here, which way to go. Of course, I came in that direction, walking the opposite direction, but I love the signs. I did strip off my mid layer. I got warmed up a little bit, and we're only, what is it, uh, 1.1 miles into this of 10. So, let's get back to it. found this little white cross on the trail as I was hiking along and I'm not seeing anything that would indicate what it marks or what it means other than it's just a white cross by a tree. Thought I would share. Let's get back to it. Well, made it to O right there. Looks like we got about 1.7 mile hike uphill. Ridge line, down and up again, down and up to Q. And then at Q, if I just want to do the southern loop, I just go to R. However, that lower loop I told you about, it's called the uh, Doolin uh, loop. Anyways, it's about a two mile loop. That's what we're gonna be taking today. And we've traveled all the way down to there. Not too bad, actually. Uh, started at elevation, hiked down. It's been mostly flat. One or two little ups, and that's about it. So I think this is where we're going to start putting in the work about going some significant up, which I don't mind. It's the downs that my knees have issues with. Anyway, taking a small break here before starting the 1.7 mile hike, probably up that hill right there. But it is a gorgeous day. I'll check within you. I'll check in with you later. Blah, if I can speak. That was a tough climb. I ain't gonna lie. I had to take a couple breaks. That's the path I just came up. But I am rewarded this morning with a pretty decent view of the winter brown of Ohio, specifically Hawking Hills. And I need to go that way because there's some red marks out that way. All right, I'm gonna catch my breath, sip some some water, and then I'm gonna can sally forth. See you at the next checkpoint. All right, I made it to Q. So we've hiked all the way down over to here. Now we're gonna attempt hike down and then come back up so if you can see this topographical map here it looks like we're gonna hike down in this valley kind of go alongside a hill here come down here to s kind of go around the hill and up the other side of the hill and hit this trail here now regarding this trail that i'm on uh it's been road ever since i made that steep climb it's just been nothing but road looking at this 
map here going around this hill that is the hill right there that we'll be going around now, i did find the path to start to the trail it's further down that way and it goes down into that valley right there it is not well marked the uh the markings i did find are very faded so i'm gonna take my time and be cautious although the trail seems to be uh cleared it is a tr there is a trail so we'll see i'm gonna attempt it it's only a two mile bypass if uh things don't look good i'll just hike north because i'm facing south right now but i'll hike north and just come right back up to this road and i'm back on the trail all right well i'm gonna grab uh, a snack to heat eat eat a snack to eat and uh yeah go explore all right made it down to s it wasn't that bad once you got onto the trail it was a it was a well marked ish trail uh the trail actually was fairly clear and easy to follow and stuff from q to s and a little bit of a surprise s is actually like a little bit of a cleared park of sorts I'm not sure exactly how you get to this from the road but there is an outhouse here, a couple of benches, one over there. Uh, there's a stone seat right there. Another bench back there. Uh, several good camping spots here. Maybe this is just a backpack camping spot. The one thing I did test, I saw this, uh, this spigot here. I wanted to see if there was water. And survey says there's water. Now, I don't know if that's potable or not, but hey, there's water. I do have a Sawyer straw filtration, and right over there is a stream. Right there on the edge of the, the green and the brown. There is a stream, you can't really see it from here. So I can filter my own water. Anyways, just wanted to share that if you do take the Southern Loop and you want to overnight camp, this is not a bad spot to camp at. A lot of flat ground, a lot of good fallen wood for a campfire. Got an outhouse. If you don't have water filtration, you can take a chance on that. A couple of benches. Yeah. Hiker approved. All right. I am going to top off of my water, actually. And then I'm going to hike up this way to get back up on the ridge line. So I got about a mile of uphill. Ugh. All right, I'll see you on top of the hill. Hey, I'm back. So just real quick, I was gonna do this video anyways when I took a lunch break, but I'm gonna do it now regarding my water bottles and this spigot here. Anyways, I started the day off with two 700 milliliter bottles. Now, obviously I bought them. I already drank the water, stuff like this. Before I start every hike, I clean these bottles out, uh, soap water thoroughly, and then I start with uh, my own filtered water from my house. And that's how I start each hike that I do here in Hocking Hills. Now, when I'm on the trail and I have to start filtering water, you notice there's two different color caps one's green one's white well the green one well green is for go green is for good so that is the filtered water so you can see that's actually clearer both bottles are full of water the green one is clear this one here not so clear in fact this one here with the white cap i just filled from this and looking at it Looking really close at it, it's not gonna pick up on the camera, 
but there is you know some sediment in there and and uh maybe some other things so my best guess here is this is a uh spring spigot so it's just tapped into the ground into a spring and it calls forth the water not a big deal perfectly good water but you definitely want to filter it or purify it in some manner before using it for cooking or to drink. Like I said, I had a Sawyer straw, but I just wanna let everybody know that when I am filtering water, when I'm backpacking water, I mark one bottle with a green cap. That is my filtered pure water for drinking and cooking. And if I'm carrying any uh, water that needs to be filtered or that's contaminated potentially, whatever, I'm just carrying it to carry it uh, so that I can filter it later. It is in the non-green cap water bottle. All right, well, I am going to uh, get these bottles back into my backpack and hike up the ridge. I'll check in with you at lunch. Well, I made it finished with the Duan loop. I'm at R, obviously. And I was very pleased to see this. Um, ignore the no, no horses, that's been all through the trail. But they have a post here saying, you know, to Q that way. So go down the road and you'll hit Q, which was where we started the Dillon Trail. And then that way, down the hill to get onto the Dillon Trail. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they put up a sign on Q for the same thing or if it got knocked down. But uh, yeah, hey guys, if you ODNR, uh, you're listening to this, Park Services, whatever. Uh, can we get a sign over on Q for the Delenn Trail? Also, uh, the trail was really, you know, easy to follow, the trail itself. Uh, you guys know my issue with the markings. They're, they're sometimes on, sometimes they're off, but the trail was pretty clear. But speaking about pretty clear, right here at R, if you go down this trail right here, not even within 100 yards. There's like five or six fallen trees right over the trail. Uh, I had to circumvent. I mean, they are just completely blocking the trail. So if you guys can get equipment back here. Obviously this service road has several trees down on it as well. Over on this way. But uh, yeah, other than that, the Dillon Trail was easy. Uh, well, one, one slight quick update. There's my, you know, potable water. I did. It. I dumped up the water in that, uh, the bottle with the white cap, and filled it with some running spring water now, as I was hiking up. Uh, it was much clearer. Doesn't mean it's, it's good to drink. It was just a lot less contaminants, visible contaminants in it. I will still filter it before I use it for cooking or drinking. All right, well, I am going to find myself a good spot to get out of this a little bit of a wind up on this ridge but a good spot to sit down and uh cook lunch 
Yes, you heard me. Cook lunch. Well, I found a spot. So for lunch, I'm having biscuits and gravy. I know it's breakfast, but I like it for lunch. Main reason why I like it for lunch is for the whole pack, it's 1,100 calories. That's a lot of calories. That's actually one of the, uh, I think it's the most of all the uh, dehydrated, freeze-dried meals that I've seen so far. Yay, made it to V. We're here. Got a mile and a half to go back to the parking. 1.1 uh, to the K. If you remember last week, K was the split between the North Loop and the South Loop. So I've hiked this little, you know, 0.4 before. But anyways, uh, it is going to be mostly uphill again to finish off my hike. So I'm going to basically go up that hill right there, go a little bit that way, and then hike over that ridge right there. That is the path according to the map. Uh, it's been it's been a decent day, really, weather-wise. Um, started off in the low 30s. We're now in the low 40s. The nature is coming out. When I stopped for lunch, got swarmed by gnats, a couple of flies. I guess they like the sausage biscuit and gravy as well. Spooked a couple of deer on the trail. And to my surprise, even though we had snow not too long ago, I have seen quite a bit of butterflies on the trail as well. Anyways, just wanted to stop and stretch a little bit before the climb, hydrate. And now let's get the climb on. Well, we made it to K. Uh, that was a bit of a climb. This was just all ridge work right there. So not too bad. So lesson learned from last week, I go that way and pretty much just go up and over. Go back to the parking area, which is about uh, 0.4 miles. So somewhere over in there. Uh, that is the route I came. And last week, the route I went is right there. So I just drank the last of my water. I'm 0.4 miles away from my car. I got another drink at the car. So I'm good to go, but the lighten's my pack. But, uh, you know, I'm still carrying the water. It's in me. Yay. So, all right. So let's get to the car. Welcome back. We are done. So, the map that I used this morning to calculate the route, which was printed off of the ODNR website, has the southern loop at 10 miles, is what I hiked including the Delenn Loop. The maps that are posted here at eight, each key point, uh, they total 10.8. Mm. It felt like a solid 10, 10 and a half. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about either number. So it was a beautiful day for a hike. A couple of highlights. Uh, this trail, both the North Loop and the South Loop, is significantly more difficult on ups and downs than the Zaleski Backpack Trail. So if you're looking for a trail that uh, would work you out a little bit more on the ups and downs, this might not be a bad thing to do. Zaleski does score points in the fact that they mark their trails better than here. It's not horrible here, but there are some confusing points. I found a few on the South Loop as well, one of which I pointed out, but there was a couple of others as well. I just didn't want to beat it. Just, just didn't want to beat that in too much on the video. So Zaleski gets points there for uh, better marked trails. Um, both Zaleski and, and the Logan Trail here at Tar Hollow State Park they do sometimes utilize uh, old logging roads for the trail. Uh, 
the southern loop here at the Tar Hollow State Park Logan Trail does utilize a fair amount of, once you're up on a ridge line, uh, log, logging trails, old, old logging trails, old roads and stuff. North loop, not so much. I think there was like one little stretch on the north loop uh, last week. Slusky Backpack Trail does it in a couple of areas, but not, not to the extent that the Logan Trail does. So, uh, you know, pick your poison. It's still, you know, a beautiful hike, uh, a lot of scenery. The uh, plus here for the Logan Trail, both the North Loop and the South Loop, is you will be crossing a lot of streams. So there's plenty of water sources. So you don't have to carry a whole bunch of water. If you have like a Sawyer straw like I do, you can bring it and just, you know, camel back, uh, camel up, I guess is what it's, it, it's the term is. Basically drink a lot of water at the source once you filter it and then carry more water until the next water source, if you so desire. Uh, let's see here. Zlesky does have a couple of water sources. Oh, I did check out the map. So earlier in the video, when we were down on the Dolan Trail and that spigot, that is a spring spigot or whatever, they do have that designated as a water source. It's a little, it has, it has some, some, uh, some grit to it. <laughs> uh, like I said, I dumped it out uh, once I crossed a fresh, fresh, clear stream and filled up and filtered the fresh, clear stream. Doesn't mean it's better, but I'd much rather have, you know, fresh, clear water to filter than, you know, grit. All in all, I do like this trail. I, I really do like this trail down here. It is a good rugged trail. Uh, reminder, there is no sign up. There's no sign in. There's no kiosk booth to sign in and get a, you know, self register for the trail. You just come out here and walk. Last note, they are logging part of the Southern Trail and that part of the trail is uh, closed say that but they weren't logging i'll leave it up to your imagination on if i detoured or not i plead a fifth anyways uh there is an easy way around uh if you hike down to a road you walk down the road you get back on the trail or you can just turn around i am not sure how long the logging is going to last there on the southern loop. I'm gonna walk back to the, the map here. I talked to the uh, parks guy last week and we even mentioned a little bit about the southern loop, but he made no mention of logging or part of the trail being closed. So I don't know if that was in, within the park services or the national services. Uh, so if you look at the map or pull up part of the map that I had on my video, the logging is uh, just south of marker U. So as I was hiking from T to U, part of the trail was closed off. And what you could do is you can just go straight down the hill and get on the road. And then you head west on the road and you'll get back on the trail. Because U is the marker where the trail crosses the road, crosses a road, that road. That is a way you can get around. However, they do not have an official bypass. They, they didn't mark a trail around where they're logging. I'm sorry, park maintenance. Yeah, it is what it is. Everybody's got to make money, including the parks. Anyways, I am out of here. It has been an eventful day for me. Uh, feel good. I really do. Less than two weeks before I fly out to Amicola Falls to start my Appalachian Trail attempt going northbound. I hope everybody had a, a great day today. Uh, stay safe and I'll see you next time.